in this case, we are going to create uh, the program that is applicable for the simulation and for the, the real robot. So because in ROS Development Studio, there's no way to get sound from the, the remote server, I'll execute it in my local computer to see what the sound will be like and how the systems will work in the real robot. So let's have a look. I've so if you go to your real setup, so as you remember, what we had in our local computer was just the barista systems and the droid speak, and the droid speak is the system that allows to generate these sounds. So let's have a look how this works. So as I as I said before, this is using DroidSpeak, which is a package generated by Gerard de Lelong. So please check out the original source. And what I did was essentially create um, a layer on top that allowed me to generate coherent and always the same sounds when I execute the same message without the emotional stuff that, that the original one had. So for the dependencies, the only dependency that you will need is this sudo pip install pygame. So let's, let's install it. There you go. And now let's have a look on what do we have to launch? So we have this droid talker launch here. And if we have a look our, at our main pipeline sim demo, so you can see that the speak active, if it's activated, then we launch this droid talker. And also we have this pipeline that we will talk at the end of this episode which binds everything up. So uh, this droid talker is activated only if we want it to speak. So in systems like in ROS Development Studio or in a remote server that we don't have sound capabilities, it doesn't make any sense. So let's launch this um, droid talker and see how it works. Droid talker. There you go. So you sh should have heard already how this works. Okay, so now what we're going to do is have a look at how this works, just really quick. So in the Barista systems, we have this uh, Droid Talker, which is here. And in the Droid Talker, um, I use the, the emotional systems just to give uh, so this is based essentially that for each um, letter of the alphabet we have designated sound that it's inside this droid droid whatever and droid uh, speak yeah so if you go here we go to the droid speak and then we go to sound you can see that we have a sound for each of the letters of the alphabet. And here what we design is we use emotions just to, when we connect phrases, let's say uh, work, for example, we execute each of the sounds sequentially and with a space in the middle. And that time between is depends on if it's normal or angry or sorry, if you want to be more energetic, if someone, if you want to someone pick something up, then you may want to install this. So what, what it does essentially is publishing this speak uh, topic, which is the one that is implemented by droid speak. So you can see here, we are launching droid speak, droid speak, yeah. And we subscribe to this droid talker message, which is the one that we use in this system 
to type any sound that we want. So here you can see that I've executed the droid speak. So now if I execute, for example, cool. Yeah. Or I type, for example, the construct. There we go. And finally, what we have to see is, okay, how do I test all this pipeline, all these systems? How do I do it? Well, as we introduced in, in the beginning of this video, uh, we I created some launches that what they do is launch all the systems and then it launches this test which i i do it i did it sequentially so this one pick calibrate and go return pipeline it's totally automatic so it spawns some objects on top of the, of the robot moves the robot to a certain position then waits for a random amount of time until it removes the objects then the robot is waiting for the objects to be removed and then it returns to base. Yeah, let's see it in action. So first things first, like always, let's check that we have uh, at least not a lot of web shells running around. There you go. Okay, I'll leave this one to check stuff. Let's launch the simulation. So we launch our simpic return, which is totally automatic. So we have our robot here and it's loading all the systems, the map, the waypoints. Now it's going to X2, which is the base. It's spawning the objects. Now it's calibrating and randomly it picks uh, a table. So it goes to table two. There you go. You can see the planning there. And then It waits a, ran a random amount of time, the system, and it removes the objects. And when it detects that the objects have been removed, then it moves. It doesn't work as I remove the objects in the same program and then I issue a command. The robot is waiting for the objects to be moved and it detects. And when it detects, then it moves to, again, the base station. Then, again, random objects are, well, the same objects are spawned and then it goes to a different location, random one, randomly. In this case, it goes to table five. And then randomly, sometimes it takes a lot of time to get rid of the objects. Sometimes it, it does it really quick and it does this again and again and again. So this is the main part where you'll spend most of the time because now you'll see all the issues, all the things that might go wrong, this kind of stuff. Yeah, so for example, it gave as location X2. So that's why it removed, it spawned and removed again the object just because it was in the place. So, and just a comment, so one of the issues I found here is lost topic uh, echo load sensor. Uh, tard. So have a look at. We have the objects 
it gets tarred and you can see that once it gets tarred you're getting really high values when it's moving so 200 grams and so on so around 20 grams of fluctuations it's normal but what's not normal is that when it's moving it has like 200 grams and this made me think that in the real robot would happen and it did at the end so I saw in the simulation this uh, strange behavior which it has a lot of sense because when you're moving the load sensor also gets forces around so simulation was really instrumental to detect this kind of errors before I had the real robot so I highly recommend you that you spend a lot of time in simulation refining the algorithms and the pipeline so that it everything works okay so now the last example would be hey I have it everything working now I want it to communicate with the web app so that it's it works exactly as it should in real life so what we are doing is launching this sim web server demo which is in the barista gazebo and it launches the same exact systems the only difference is that it's launching this start barista page and also it's launching a different pipeline because this one it waits for the web server stuff yeah so let's have a look so if we launch it we do ross launch barista gazebo sim web so we launch oh, sorry let's relaunch the simulation there we go so we have the simulation running now we launch the sim web server demo while this is launching okay it goes to the place and we spawn the objects and it's waiting for a command so it's stating that it needs calibration so now we need uh, the IP of our system in ROSDS or in your local computer for that in ROSDS we have this alias which is public public IP so we have this IP here and we copy and then we copy here our IP with the same thing here so now we have the server running so there we go so we are at 99% of the battery which is good and let me put this in a side and then this in another side okay it's not very elegant but there we go so now we have this which it's stating that we have to calibrate so let's let's calibrate there we go so now it's calibrated and it's saying hey I don't have any table here so what do I do so it's waiting you see so now we say hey go to table I don't know let's have a look um, table 2 for example it's a good place so now we select table 2 okay so it's planning to table 2 perfect there we go so it's planning and going to table 2 
There we go. So now it says, hey, do you want to remove the object? If no, then it will wait until I tell him so. So this program, when I say, yes, I want to remove the object, then I remove the object and then automatically the robot comes back. This simulates a person picking the object whenever they want and then it comes back to the object to the, the base, which is x2 in this case. And once we have it, then it starts all over again. So it spawns objects and it's waiting for a new calibration. I recalibrate again and now we it's waiting for the table command. Let's tell him, for example, uh, go to table um, table 3. So it's planning to table 3. It's going there. And there you go. Finally, it found the path to go there and it got to the place. Fantastic. So we have it ready to go. And now we say, hey, no, I don't want to remove the object. No, I don't want it. Okay, yeah, I want to remove the object. So now they remove the object and it returns to base. And that's it. So the next step is testing everything in the real robot. So that's episode four. What we will do is get everything and set up the real robot to make this work. So the navigation, the speaking, the load sensor and everything. So until then, keep going.